Apocalypse, the end of days. According to the Native American Hopi people, the world is out of balance and headed for extinction. The Hopi believe that this world will end with fire, some kind of uh, great massive destruction. These ancient doomsday prophecies foretell a blue star's arrival, leading to a great shaking of the earth and a final cataclysmic purification of our world. There's going to be water where there's land and land where there's water. Will the source of destruction be the earth itself? The magnetic pole is shifting. Or will it come from the heavens? It might be a comet that causes great destruction. These things can come in very fast. They can come in from any direction. Now, prophecy and modern science collide. There may be hundreds of thousands of asteroids that will eventually cross the Earth's orbit. Some people are doing everything they can to avert disaster. And you are going to do what you have to do to protect yourself and your family. But for most of us, it may be too late. We don't have a lot of time, is what I'm saying. This is Countdown to Apocalypse. The countdown is on to December 21st, 2012, the date given to us by the ancient Maya for the end of the world. But there is another native people in the Americas who foretell of an impending apocalypse on planet Earth. The Hopi of the American Southwest. The Hopi have lived in the Three Mesas area in Arizona for thousands of years and have an ancient tradition of prophecy. The Hopi have been living with the idea of prophecy for many centuries and they pass it down from generation to generation. They believe the world is their mother, the son is the father. They're very worried about the world right now. The Hopi believe that the world has been created and destroyed three times. They see a series of world ages that people pass through. And many Hopi elders believe that we're at the end of the fourth world. According to Hopi legend, each world that has preceded our present one ended in cataclysm. The first world ended with fire. The second world ended with ice. The third world ended with a great flood. And many Hopi elders believe that there are various prophetic signs that signal that we're at the very end of the fourth world. But how will this world meet its end? The ancient Hopi may have left a clue on what's known as Prophecy Rock, a large boulder carved with strange symbols. The Hopi believe that this carving represents the two paths that humanity may take, one which leads to peace and the other which leads to destruction. There are two lines carved in this rock and they're carved diagonally, but they're parallel lines. The lower line is uh, representing the true Hopi way. You see a, a figure of a Hopi man tending corn, which means he's very close to the earth. He's respecting Mother Earth. But above it, parallel to the line, is a, the line that we're on now as a culture at large. A line of chaos, disruption, excessive materialism, a line that ends in a zigzag. It doesn't keep going. And that's the end of the fourth world. If mankind follows the incorrect path, the creator is going to wipe everything clean, just like he's done before. It's going to be very bad. The Hopi message is that mankind is in trouble. Time is running out. Unlike the Maya, the Hopi don't give a specific date for the end of the world. But according to the Hopi, the human race has strayed from the true path and the world is spinning out of control. And I hope you have a term for this, Koyana Skatsi, world out of balance. And you look around at the world today, you know, it's a pretty chaotic place. There's floods, tsunamis, earth changes. I've had Hopis grab me and shake me and tell me, wake up, Tom. We're trying to tell you the truth here. 
If we fail to heed the warning that the Hopi have given us, these prophecies that have come down from generation to generation, then it's going to be a rough time for everyone on the planet. While some see their end time predictions as simply a warning shot for mankind, the ancient Hopi's track record of accurate prophecy cannot be overlooked. They have many prophecies. Many of them have been filled. They used to say this is the 11th hour. Years before the arrival of Europeans on their land, the Hopi predicted the coming of the white-skinned men who struck their enemies with thunder. Of course, this is representing guns that the white man would bring. A further prophecy was snakes of iron will crisscross the land. These represent the railroad tracks that started to appear all over. The Hopi prophecies include a description of a giant spider web that covers the land. This is a telegraph lines and then telephone lines. And now the World Wide Web, the internet that we talk, it's a giant spider web that's encompassing the Earth. So this is another major prophecy that has come to pass. The Hopi also have predicted rivers of stone will appear on the land. This might be symbolic of the concrete roads. They talk about the road systems. And of course, these prophecies come from way back, long before tarred roads and cement roads were really feasible. But there are other, more ominous prophecies that point to events of the more recent past, indicating that the fourth world may be nearing its expiration date. The Hopi predicted that at the end of the fourth world, the sea would turn black and many creatures in the sea would die. And of course, we saw this in the summer of 2010 with the Gulf oil spill. Many creatures, a lot of the marine life died in this oil spill. As for when the end times will come about, the Hopi prophecy speaks of a celestial sign that will alert the world to its imminent destruction. One of the last prophecies was that a blue star would appear in the heavens, and then that it will signal the end of the, of the fourth world. This blue star's arrival will mark the beginning of a nightmarish period known as the Great Purification. When you talk about purification, you're wiping the slate clean. These events have happened many times in history, so will man survive? Time would tell. The Hopi prophecy tells us that the great purification will begin with a great shaking of the earth. There are three circles on the lower line, and these are the three world shakings that the Hopi have predicted in their prophecies. Some believe the shakings refer to the two world wars and the third world war still to come, but others choose a more literal interpretation, earthquakes. The Hopi are not alone in predicting catastrophic earthquakes ending this world age. Another indigenous American people also shares this apocalyptic belief. The Aztecs believe that we're living in the fifth cycle of the world. After the fifth cycle, there will be no other. But the Aztec myth s explicitly states that the end of the fifth cycle will be the end of time, and that's it. The cycle we're in is that of the earthquake, and that tells us how we're going to end. Predictions of great earthquakes are also found in the New Testament book of Revelation. The sixth seal speaks of a huge earthquake. That seems to speak to something that um, is cataclysmic. The entire earth is convulsing under the judgment of God, and two-thirds of the earth's population dies. The Hopi, the Aztecs, and the Christian Bible all point to catastrophic earthquakes during the end times. And many believe that this great shaking is already underway. Earthquakes seem to be increasing 
in intensity and the end quantity. We're getting more and more earthquakes all the time. And of course, we saw this in March of 2011 with the Japanese earthquake and tsunami that followed. The Haitian earthquake is another example. Massive earthquakes have leveled entire cities and killed hundreds of thousands of people. And the worst may be yet to come. And if you look at the rate of really great earthquakes, eight and a half and above, there have been more than usual since 2004. So these shakings that the Hopi talk about may be these earthquakes that are happening all over the planet. And this is more verification that the fourth world is soon to end. The Hopi prophecies tell us our time is running out. They've been right before. What does that mean for our future? According to ancient Hopi prophecy, a blue star is going to arise in the heavens, and our world will undergo a cataclysmic great shaking. The Hopi have many prophecies about Earth changes. Earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes. This is all part of what they have seen centuries ago, that this will be the conclusion of the fourth world. With the countdown to apocalypse underway, some families around the country are preparing to survive in the face of global devastation. Everybody, duck cover and hold on. Everybody get down. It's an earthquake. At least once a month, Brian Foster and his family perform an earthquake drill. This may seem strange, since they live in the nation's heartland, far from the major coastal fault zones. The earthquake just ended. We're going to stay down for 10 seconds just to make sure there's no aftershocks or tremors. But for Brian and Nikki Foster, these drills are a response to a very real threat. Their home is in central Illinois, less than 200 miles from the new Madrid seismic zone. The Madrid seismic zone is responsible for three of the biggest earthquakes in North America, east of the Rockies. All right, Callista, are you OK? Camden, are you all right? Yeah. Brian? Yeah. When you look at scientific data based on historical data points, by 2040, there's a 25% chance of a 7 to 7.5 earthquake on the Richter scale, which means we can expect to see collapse of buildings. We can expect to see fatalities, underground sewage, and underground water pipes bursting. Within the life of my children, there's going to be a significant earthquake that is going to cause economic loss and fatalities across the board. According to seismologists, the new Madrid fault zone is overdue for another quake. Is this Hopi prophecy soon to become reality? The Hopis believe that we're on the wrong path. The Earth is trying to speak to us, Mother Nature. She's calling to us, and we're not listening. A major quake in the new Madrid would immediately put hundreds of thousands at risk, and the shaking would be only the beginning of the nightmare. One thing we realize now with it is that an earthquake can be a cascading disaster, that the ground starts to move, the fault moves, but then you get other effects. You get what we call liquefaction, which is basically you're shaking the ground so hard that it stops acting solid. You can get a lot of landslides if it's a mountainous area. And the firestorms from earthquakes can be very devastating. The danger of earthquake-related firestorms was dramatically illustrated by the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. Amazingly, the quake was registered on seismographs more than 5,600 miles away. 28,000 buildings were destroyed and at least 3,000 people perished in the ensuing disaster. And if the great shaking prophesied by the Hopi comes to pass, it will not just be people in California who are at risk. 39 of the 50 states are threatened by seismic zones, an area that includes cities such as Seattle, Memphis, New York, and Boston. Another example the 240-mile-long Wasatch Fault runs directly beneath Salt Lake City, home to 1.6 million people. 
The real concern is the cities that we're building in proximity to major faults. We're making these mega disasters inevitable. It's probably inevitable that we're going to see an earthquake kill a million people. But as destructive as a massive earthquake on land can be, an offshore earthquake can be catastrophic. As the world saw in 2004 in Southeast Asia, an earthquake on the ocean floor can generate devastating tsunamis, killing hundreds of thousands of people. And a tsunami is not like a wave that comes in and, and crashes. It's like the ocean rising up. It's like a freight train that's going to be coming at you, maybe carrying things along at, you know, 50 miles an hour. To me, that's a terrifying scenario. Could the great shaking foretold by Hopi prophecy be a harbinger of worldwide tidal waves? The great shaking will come. The Earth is going to vibrate. There'll be massive earthquakes, massive tsunamis. Water will cover the land, and new land will rise, and water will be where the other land was. Frighteningly, as the disaster in Japan showed us, there's only so much we can do to predict and prepare for devastating seismic disasters. Figuring out which one is going to go next is not a winning game. People keep trying, and they keep looking at faults and thinking, well, this one's ripe, or this one's overdue. And time and time again, the earthquake will happen somewhere else. While it's unlikely that a single earthquake or tsunami could destroy the planet, scientists worry that a great shaking as predicted by the Hopi could be just the first stage in a cataclysmic chain reaction. There are cases where big earthquakes have triggered volcanic activity. And volcanic eruptions can have a devastating impact around the globe. These really massive eruptions that we, we know have happened and will happen will kick so much stuff into the atmosphere that it will block enough sunlight to change the weather patterns globally for a period of years. Similar to a nuclear winter, you're going to affect the climate, the, the amount of sunshine, you're going to affect the temperature. This kind of environmental disaster could threaten our very survival. We know because it has happened before. A huge eruption about 75,000 years ago in Lake Toba on the island of Sumatra may have nearly wiped out the human race. People think that it affected the climate so much that the human population was really impacted and dwindled down to tens of thousands. Another extinction level event took place in North America approximately 650,000 years ago when the Yellowstone caldera in northwest Wyoming erupted. A similar eruption today would be disastrous. If the caldera around Yellowstone actually blew, that could be part of the Hopi prophecy of fire ending the fourth world. A mega earthquake leading to tsunamis and volcanic fire from the center of the Earth. If the Hopi prophecy is correct, this may only be the beginning of our horrors at the end of the fourth world. Hopi prophecy tells us that a sign from the heavens will herald the end of our world. Some Hopis talk about a blue star that's going to become visible uh, in the near future when the end time is near. And when it does, it's going to trigger a kachina to come dance in the plaza. Kachinas are spirit messengers. Um, they're kind of like angels. The kachina spirits are embodied in the kachina dances, which the Hopi perform in their plazas during the spring and summer months. According to Hopi prophecy, these dances will play a pivotal role in the end times. They say when the blue kachina shows up, that's when the period of purification will begin. According to ancient Hopi prophecy, the fourth world, the world in which we currently live, will be destroyed by a great shaking. Some have interpreted this prediction to mean that the Earth will be devastated by massive earthquakes, tsunamis, and supervolcanoes. 
But the Hopi prophecies also include an ominous prediction of catastrophic global warfare. When the blue star shows up, that's when they think there'll be World War III. And another Hopi prophecy may shed light on how destructive this Third World War will be. The Hopi have a prophecy called the gourd of ashes falling on the earth. That will happen during the end times, they, they said. In 1945, Hopi elders saw the gourd of ashes prophecy fulfilled in the mushroom clouds over Japan. When the Hopi saw that the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they felt our prophecies are coming true, so maybe it's the time that we should bring our prophecies to the world. And one of these prophecies is that World War III will occur, and there are rather dire scenarios of rivers of blood and bombs raining down like hailstones. With the end of the Cold War, the prospect of global thermonuclear conflict has faded from the headlines. But has the danger of nuclear annihilation really receded? We still have enough nuclear warheads in the world to basically wipe out entire humanity. I mean, that's still there. Uh, there are several thousand in the US, there are thousands in, in Russia or uh, in the other republics that still have them. But today, there's about 20,000 nuclear weapons left. So we're still in the same situation we were before, where we uh, can destroy everything. We can annihilate human society. And in fact, one nuclear submarine has enough weapons to probably kill most of the people on the planet indirectly. Making matters even more dangerous, instead of a standoff between two superpowers as during the Cold War, more and more developing countries are now racing to acquire nuclear weapons. India and Pakistan, for example, are thought to have between them about 200 nuclear weapons. And these are weapons of the same sorts of sizes that the United States used against Japan in the Second World War, which means that Pakistan, which may have 100 of them, is approaching the level where it could probably attack anybody in the world and destroy them. If there were a war between India and Pakistan and each of them used 50 nuclear weapons on the other, it's probably around 20 million people would die. And that's a pretty good fraction of all the people that died in the Second World War of the whole Earth. While most nuclear doomsday scenarios have focused on a massive exchange between the United States and the former Soviet Union, even a limited nuclear war on the subcontinent would be catastrophic for the entire world. The biggest concern is what's called the nuclear winter. Although 20 million people might die in India and Pakistan, some people have estimated that as many as a billion could die worldwide because the cold weather, the ultraviolet light, and the loss of rainfall would damage agriculture. And so we wouldn't be able to feed the human population. If you blow up enough nukes, and you don't need thousands, I mean, you only need a few hundred probably, uh, you'd create humongous fires, which would basically uh, blacken the sky for several years. So those terrible effects, a billion people dying, are from a war between India and Pakistan. Now, instead, if you had a war between the United States and Russia, the Earth would be plunged into ice age conditions within a few weeks. The temperatures would be well below freezing, and they'd stay below freezing for years. So this would probably kill the majority of the human population. The few survivors of a nuclear world war would be forced to fend for themselves in a lawless world. Cities and towns would be war zones. The end result is that eventually the pandemonium in the world would rage. I call it the big red reset button, where everything gets set back to zero. The social infrastructure would collapse. Every family would be on its own, with no one else to depend on. After people start missing a few meals, starvation, uh, hunger starts to set in, people get concerned about their families, about providing for their children. A person will do unspeakable things. When it comes down to survival and you're looking at the faces of your hungry children, you're gonna do anything you can to make sure that your children get fed and that you get fed. 
doesn't matter if you're rich, how much money you have in the bank, or how many credit cards you have. Doesn't matter what social or political status you have. Kings and presidents will be at the same level of the poorest person on the street. The Hopi have predicted a civilization ending nuclear war. And not only that, they may also have foretold where this war will begin. The Hopi believe that world war will start in the land that first received the divine light of wisdom. So that might be the Middle East, that might be India or China, where these ancient cultures received the first light of wisdom. That's where the war and mass destruction will erupt from and spread across the world. The Hopi prophecy relating to World War III is very interesting in that uh, they talk about what appear to be modern civilizations, the Mideast, China, the other large nations. India, China, and Israel are all nuclear powers. Tensions between the West and Iran are reaching a fever pitch due to Iran's nuclear ambitions, escalating fears of a nuclear war in the Middle East. It seems like they are definitely on the right track when they're talking about current political situations. And these are ancient prophecies that do seem to signal what, uh, what is going on today. If this ancient doomsday prophecy, helped along by current geopolitical tensions, comes to pass, prepper families such as the Fosters will be ready. They are currently preparing to flee from post-apocalyptic chaos to a safe location far from populated areas. If we felt we were not safe in our home or our community, we would literally bug out. By bugging out, we would grab our bug out bags, which are backpacks that contain about three days of supplies that allow us to get physically from our current location to a location about eight or nine hours away from here. This location is where we store our bug out bags. In addition to the bug out bags, we have one, two, three, four, five for each kid. We also have an emergency bug out bag that contains a significant amount of medical supplies should we need it. And we also have a communications bag that has radios in it that allow us to communicate if we need to while we're in between our current location and or our location we're heading to. If we need to bug out, the kids simply come down, pick them up, and then they go into our bug out vehicle and we're ready to go. Anything necessary to survive in a short term situation is in this bag. People are going to do what they have to do to survive. And you are going to do what you have to do to protect yourself and your family. You're not going to care if the law says, I can't do A, B, or C. If you need to do it to survive, you're going to do it. According to the Hopi prophecy of the Blue Star Kachina, the countdown to apocalypse will be set off by the arrival of a blue star, followed by a series of cataclysms leading to the destruction of mankind. What is this mysterious blue star, and has it already arrived? There's a lot of speculation what the blue star is. Some have said that the blue star is the hale bopp comet. It was a brilliant blue comet in March of 1997 that blazed across the sky. Hale Bop was a fairly bright, small blue comet, and so it kind of fit the picture of the blue Kachina. Hale Bop was one of the brightest comets in history, and its arrival prompted predictions of global apocalypse. In March 1997, 39 members of a UFO cult called Heaven's Gate committed mass suicide after Hale Bop's arrival, in the belief that the world would be destroyed and they would be transported to a better life among the stars. Every time a comet has appeared in history, there, there were many explanations of what it was connected to, something we were doing bad, occasionally something we were doing good. But some believe that the blue star may be more than just a sign from the heavens. It may actually be the instrument of our destruction. The purification will end the fourth world. And a lot of the Hopis say that the, the purification will be the result of fire. 
It might be a comet that's, that roars by that uh, causes great destruction. Or it might be an asteroid strike that slams into the planet, the same type that ended the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. In the past 600 million years, there have been five major mass extinctions. Each event extinguished half of all species on Earth. We've had many Earth-wide cleansing of the planet, complete obliteration of all life just about on Earth. It's safe to say that in the future there will be such events and that they will be devastating uh, on a worldwide scale. Could the prophecy of the blue star Kachina be a warning of a new interstellar extinction event in our time? It's estimated that there may be hundreds of thousands of asteroids that will eventually cross the Earth's orbit. Now, the ones that people are really worried about, the ones that would definitely cause planet-wide catastrophe, millions of people's deaths, are objects that might be half a mile in diameter, and there are approximately a thousand of those. While amateur sky watchers and Hollywood filmmakers may worry about large asteroids, a comet heading toward Earth could be even more dangerous. The orbits of asteroids are predictable, and in most cases we'd have years, if not decades, to prepare for an impact. But comets, on the other hand, can strike with little warning. The thing that's so disturbing about it is that we really don't know where almost any of the comets are. The great majority of them swoop in from an incredibly large distance, uh, hundreds of times further out than Pluto, unpredictably. And we don't even notice them, don't even discover them until they start getting heated up by the sun, so they really start shining and glowing. By that time, it only has a few months before it's gonna cross through at very high speed through the inner part of the solar system. And that is really too late to do anything about it. The devastation caused by a large comet or asteroid would dwarf that of even the global thermonuclear war foretold by the Hopi Gourd of Ashes prophecy. For example, the one that killed the dinosaurs released an energy that's equivalent to a one megaton nuclear weapon exploding every few square kilometers at the surface of the Earth. So this is an almost incomprehensible amount of energy being released there. In that case, we're talking about something that's five or six miles across. You're just dumping such an incredible amount of energy into one place at one time, it tends to light everything on fire, everything within hundreds of miles. And then that just creates mass firestorms. It's filling the atmosphere with smoke. Of course, if there are any cities, they're incredibly flammable. I mean, the amount of soot just completely blocks all the light. And it's not just you that can't see anything, it's the plants, photosynthesis. It can all be shut down as a byproduct of this impact. As destructive as an impact on land would be, a large comet or asteroid hitting open water would create even more havoc. You have dumped all of that energy of thousands of hydrogen bombs into the ocean. In a matter of seconds, you're vaporizing cubic miles of ocean. What is the water going to do after it's all blasted out in a spray of steam? All the other ocean water is going to flow right in as fast as it can and set up a tsunami like you cannot imagine. I'm talking about a wall of water that when it ramps up the shore could be hundreds, 500, 1,000 feet high, and nothing's going to stop it. It will just keep on rolling in and obliterating everything for 50 or 100 miles. An interplanetary impact in our oceans would instantly bring the Hopi Great Purification Prophecy to life. These impacts have caused mass extinctions in the past. Is there hope we'll be able to avoid a similar disaster in the future? Probably there's only about a less than a 1% chance in a human life that we'll have a big impact. Maybe less than that. But when it happens, millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people are going to die. If the Hopi Blue Star is an asteroid or comet on a collision course with Earth, it could mean the end of mankind's reign on our planet. 
Some experts, however, fear that the Hopi prophecies are a warning that the Earth is on a collision course with something even larger that could literally turn the planet upside down. The Hopi prophecy of the Blue Star Kachina tells us that the end of our world will be heralded by the appearance of a blue star, followed by a spirit guide ushering in the last days on Earth. The Hopi say when the Blue Kachina shows up, that's when the period of purification will begin. Another prophecy sheds further light on how the end times will come about. The Hopi believe that the world is kept on its axis by twin warrior gods who live at each pole. This is a very ancient Hopi legend of these warrior twins that uh, control the north and south pole and they control the rotation of the planet and they keep the axis uh, revolving properly. The two twin warrior gods, when they leave the poles, the earth will shift. It's gonna shake like a dog getting out of the water. And the Hopi will be unable to keep the world in balance, so that means the fourth world will very soon come to a close. According to the legend, when the twins leave the poles, it will instigate a cataclysmic pole and rotational shift on the planet. Could this really happen? Magnetic pole shifts do occur. The North Pole flips to the South. It, over geologic history, probably happens every 200,000 years or so, or the, although at present we're about seven or 800,000 years into the, the present normal polarity. I would say that certainly the, the uh, magnetic field is weakening and the North Pole is traveling very quickly uh, in the North. So something is happening and we are long overdue for a polar reversal. As for the cause of this shift, some scientists believe it will be an encounter with something far larger than the asteroid or comet that killed off the dinosaurs. Something so big, it would shake the Earth to its very core. Some stargazers believe that the Hopi Blue Star may in fact be the elusive Planet X thought to lurk in the outer reaches of the solar system. A lot of people say, well, if Planet X were out there, we'd see it, everybody would see it, amateurs would see it, and you'd be able to point to it. And that's really not true. There are areas in the solar system that you cannot see easily. NASA has found 40 new planets outside of the orbit of Pluto. And these are in all kinds of varying orbits. Can some of them come in and come near the Earth? The answer is yes. The ancients tell us this. According to this theory, Planet X has an elongated orbit that brings it near Earth once every 3,600 years. These big objects can come into the solar system, and now and then, yes, they will come close to Earth. And when they do, they're going to have major effects. According to some experts, the strong gravitational pull of such a large body passing near the Earth could physically alter the planet and literally move the poles. For example, take something twice the size of our moon. That's enough to pick up the Earth's surface and basically make a land wave about 20 feet high, moving 1,000 miles an hour across the land. Basically, what happens, very quickly, the crust and mantle shift over the core and pick up a new rotational direction. And so what was the old North Pole now has slid off to the side. And now we start forming a new ice cap at the what we call the North Pole now. If this polar shift occurs, global weather would change dramatically. And agricultural patterns would need to be altered overnight to forestall global starvation. If a pole shift were to happen today, the old texts are very clear that they say every wall would fall. Every building in existence today would be tossed to the ground, basically. Nothing is gonna be standing. And very few people would live through this. Civilization as we know it will be finished. Earth would be basically brought back to its knees, to the cave ages, if you will. 
While this sort of cataclysm would challenge even the hardiest prepper's survival skills, Brian and Nikki Foster are doing all they can to make sure they and their children are prepared for an uncertain future. It's important to me that the kids have an awareness of being self-reliant, and I help them to define it for themselves. For example, lately we've been spending a lot of time on how to start fires primitively. They will have the tools to be able to do that. Gardening is another one. If there were a catastrophic event today, we would live off of our current stores we have, which is the canned food that we grew last year and we preserved. That would last us long enough till we could preserve and can this food in the garden behind us. So growing our own garden allows us to be self-reliant on ourselves and less reliant on the grocery stores and the big box chain stores in terms of fruits and vegetables. The Fosters are also preparing to defend themselves in a world of scarcity and deprivation. In a significant life-altering event, ammunition is not going to be limitless. It's going to be extremely limited, and the question is, what do you do when you have no more ammunition? Well, what we've reverted to is the bow and arrow. That is a very primitive tool, but it was highly effective for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So should we need to harvest food in a different manner than we do today, we have multiple techniques and ways to do it. We can use snares, we can use traditional weapons, or in this case, we can rely on Callista to use her bow and arrow. So at the end of the day, we will survive it as best we can, and we will help those who are not prepared as best we can, but we will take care of ourselves first. According to the Hopi, the end of the fourth world, ushered in by the blue star, will be accompanied by great death, destruction, and suffering. But for those who make it through, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. This fifth world is going to be a beautiful world, harmonious, and uh, a world of peace. It's like a birthing experience. It's kind of violent, you know, when you go through it. It's a very dramatic and painful thing to go through. Once we get to the fifth world, we have something beautiful to look forward to. If Hopi prophecy comes to pass, those who are pure of heart and prepared may prevail and inherit a better world. But for the rest of us, the end of the fourth world means that our time on Earth runs out. The Hopi tell us it may not be too late to stop this countdown to apocalypse, but the clock is ticking. Will we heed their warnings in time?